Hello everyone, this is Fisty McRib and we're back with more Fallout 76. Today I'm going to spend a little time with the bow that was introduced in Wastelanders, specifically how to use it in VATS. Since it came out, I've seen and heard a lot of complaints around the community about how it doesn't work in VATS. At first, I just assumed this to be true, that it was bugged. Then I decided to spend a little time with it and found that I was able to get it to work extremely well in VATS, so well that it's become one of my favorite weapons to use. The conclusion I came to is that while there may in fact be a few bugs related to using the bow in VATS, the real issue most people are likely having is that it takes a bit of practice and rhythm to land your shots consistently. It also seems much more reliant on high perception than other weapons when it comes to accuracy. Let's take a look at it in use, I'll explain how I use it, and you can see if it's something you think might work for you. I thought a good place to get us started would be the line in the sand event. We get a pretty dense field of not too tanky enemies, so they should be good to showcase on. And before I got here, the funny thing is I've played around with the bow and vats quite a bit. I was extremely confident in how this was going to work. So confident, in fact, that I went ahead and changed my perk setup. I don't normally use the Gun Fu perk, but I thought it would be kind of cool if I could show this off with Gun Fu. And uh, unfortunately, it seems to have led to a lack of consistency. I can't say for sure that having Gun Fu on is what caused the problem. It could very well be that I just loaded into a new area, needed to get my rhythm down a little bit, and it was entirely on me. But the inconsistency lasted long enough that it made me think that was a problem. So before too long, I did go ahead and change my perks back to remove Gun Fu. So you can see what things look like uh, without it on there, just so we can eliminate it as a potential variable. So here we go. And of course, the first shot I miss. This was on me. There was a lot of cover there. And uh, what I did find is the bow does not like cover. Anything that interferes there does tend to complicate things. But as we get out into the open, we start to see much better performance. A new wave of enemies is incoming. And we'll see that even at a long distance, we don't miss. It's been very, very consistent. Has a few little quirks about it that we'll go over. But by and large, once you get the hang of it, it works extremely well. So when I say once you get the hang of it, what does that mean? Well, there's a few quirks with the bow and vats. There are a few things that just don't work. And there are a few things that really do. The key to the whole thing is you need to draw first and have that arrow completely drawn. You'll notice when it's completely drawn, it wobbles just a bit. Once it's completely drawn, that's when you hit vats. And when you hit it, you release almost immediately. Remember that a 95% chance is not a 100% chance. So you will occasionally miss, and that's okay. But I found once things are set up right and we get the rhythm down, it works extremely well, and it's a lot of fun at events like this. So here we draw, that's release. Draw, that's release. Draw, that's and release. Once you get the rhythm down, you have a feel for it, and you don't have to watch it as much. We can clearly see that using the bow in vats is absolutely a viable choice with a little bit of practice. Let's skip ahead a little. And here's another shot at a distance. A few more popping up on the radar. A lot of distance there. I couldn't even see that target. But we're drawn, we vats and release. And you can see basically what I do in events like this, in areas like this, is I just move with the bow drawn. That way there's no challenge, there's no difficulty to remember to keep it drawn. If you try to move without it drawn, 
and then draw and fire, you'll find that that just complicates things for you. So there you have that jump vats shot that everybody likes to do. Works beautifully with the bow. And we can see that since we removed the Gunfu perk, this has been incredibly consistent, even at long distances. Targets that we can't really even see. Now here I'm about to get overconfident. I think I have my target. I jump by vats, I shoot, but there was nothing to vats because it was behind a tree trunk. So uh, there we go. No problem. Can't really blame vats on uh, my own overconfidence. And we'll jump ahead to a few more kills here. You can see, draw, that's release. Draw. That's release. It works like a charm. We'll skip past a little bit of uh, just looting here for some more kills. And we can see again, draw, that's release works very consistently. Now the other thing I'm doing here, and you'll notice this the whole time, I don't stop moving. That's my normal play style. I have tried it while standing still, and it seems to still work okay. That whole routine of being drawn, then vats, and immediately release. But I feel like it's not as consistent. I could be wrong about that. It could simply be that it's out of the ordinary for me. So if you prefer to stay stationary, I'd encourage you to try it. But if you find that the results aren't as reliable, then uh, maybe move just a bit more. Now, at this event, there are usually Scorch Beasts that attack and we need to take down. Uh, there was one flying around, but in this case, I opted not to engage. This is a weakness when using the bow. I have noticed consistently when targeting anything that is above me that it's extremely unreliable in VATS. And with Scorch Beasts in particular, where they're not only above us, but they move very fast, they turn in the air. Whatever it is about the way the Scorch Beast works and the way the bow works in VATS, they simply do not play nicely together. It's not to say that it's impossible to get your hits, and to do it, you would use the same principle. Stay drawn, keep moving, vats, and immediately release. But because the Scorch Beast moves so quickly and because it's above us, it just doesn't play nice. So I wanted to just kind of point that out before we cut away from this event. I think at this point we've seen how it works. Let's go try it out on some slightly tankier enemies. So here we arrive at West Tech, home of some high-level super mutants, and we'll see what I was talking about as we target something above our head. Our first shot is going to miss. There's another one above our head, and it seems to affect the hit percentage chance as well, and then once we're on the ground level, we're good, even though Vats bugged out and didn't do damage there. But we can see the same technique works. Now we're moving. We got a little closer. I think that counteracted the angle. Draw, that's release. Draw, that's release. Draw, that's release. You can see it. It works consistently. And I know, at least for myself, I have a lot of fun with it. The bow that I'm using here is not a legendary bow at all. I am a bloodied build. I went ahead and put all of the archer perks on to maximize damage to take on these tougher enemies. But uh, there are no legendary effects. There is no special vats hit chance. There's nothing like that going on there. I found the results to be consistent with all of the different bow mods as well. So that does not seem to affect anything negatively. And we'll see, we've got a couple more to take down in the back here. Once we're finished out back here, we will uh, change things up a little bit. Change our armor, remove the unyielding armor, and, and look at a few things. But we can see that this technique works extremely well even at a distance like that. 
Now we have some cover interfering with us. We're going to have some more cover interfering with us here. Because that is in a shopping cart. It just doesn't like us today. Move to the body and that seems to override it. We'll take out one last enemy, make some changes, and travel. So the first thing I want to do here is switch from my unyielding armor to the Chinese stealth armor. That's going to reduce my perception dramatically. But I want to see how much of an effect that has. Now, the other thing I want to do is show you the bow itself. I know I mentioned that it wasn't legendary, but we can take a look here. You can see it's just a regular old bow with the glow sight mod. I kept the standard arrows on it uh, just because I didn't want there to be any other variables there. So we just kept it standard, but it seems to work just fine with any mods. Now we've traveled into Huntersville and we can take a look and confirm we have the Chinese stealth armor on. Still at low health to uh, get a little more damage, but it's not boosting any of our special stats this way. Unyielding armor is all off. If we look at our special, the perception is 19, which is still very high. Uh, it's a stealth build. Perception is at 15. And the eagle eyes mutation gives me another four points to land at 19 without any legendary effects. Let's see if the bow is any less effective in vats when we cut our perception effectively by half. Walking up the hill, we do see a super mutant up by the water tower. Now two things come to mind. Number one, that enemy is very much well above us. The other thing I'm noticing is a lower VATS hit percentage, and I think that's tied directly to our lower perception. We missed another shot there, and now we're on. That's a bit better being level on the ground. Let's make our way up to the water tower and see if we can't just uh, take care of our friend up here. We're going to get close. And there you could see, again, a lower hit percentage based on our lower perception. But we did hit the target. We'll sneak through town a little bit more. Making our way up to the square, where we'll encounter a few more enemies at ground level. And again, I'm noticing lower hit percentage, but still fairly consistent performance as far as how often the weapon hits. In my own experimentation off camera, I did find that using the Chinese stealth suit made it a bit more challenging to get the rhythm down because I'm unable to see the tip of the arrow wobbling. That makes it a little more difficult and I think sometimes I'm selecting vats too early. I think I'm seeing some of that here as I got a little frustrated. There we go. But that could also be our reduced hit chance due to the lower perception. It could also be a factor that Vats tends to like the face when you target the head. So it could very well be an issue there. That's pretty good. So we seem to not have any problems when we're close and when we are facing the enemy. But when they're turned around, sometimes Vats doesn't like that as much. Now with a little bit of distance, it was okay. And another good one. And that's just me fumbling. We'll get one more down here. And then we'll discuss some conclusions. Low hit chance. Elevated enemy again. Back is turned. And we'll notice as we get to the other side here, at a very similar distance, we have a much higher hit chance, but I fired too soon. Get some line of sight on his face. And we draw that release. Perfect. 
After all the time I spent with the bow, both on and off camera, can I conclude whether or not there are bugs affecting it? Honestly, I think there are some. Notably the issue we saw with Gun Fu, but they're probably not as prevalent or game-changing as some are making them out to be. We saw firsthand that lowering our perception stat had a dramatic effect on the VAT's hit chance percentage, and that was with a still high perception of 19. Is it possible that that's a bug in and of itself? Possibly. Maybe we're penalized a bit too much for lowered perception in this case, and perhaps that's unintentional. Personally, I don't think that's a bug. I think that's just how the weapon works. Even if it is a bug, it's how it works at the moment, so if we want to use bows in VATs, we just have to deal with it. The key to success is the technique. Draw completely, stay moving, select your target in VATs, and almost immediately release. Whether it's intended or not, I personally like having a bit of a mechanical challenge to using the weapon this way. It makes VATs less of an aimbot and more of a tool that requires dedicated skills to use properly. As such, it's made the bow one of my favorite weapons to use in Fallout 76. That's going to be it for today. I hope you found this video informative and I hope you can use these tips to your advantage. As always, if you did, please go ahead and leave a like, share it with a friend, and most importantly, subscribe so you don't miss any of my Fallout 76 videos going forward.